Hello students, welcome to Akshar Island classes. This is Gafar sir, your physics faculty. Let's start our session. Today we are going to learn about class 8 uh, physics and the topic is uh, kinematics. Let's start the kinematics. So now, as you know, the kinematics is a branch of physics. It deals with the uh, motion of the object. So whenever you are talking about uh, motion of the object, what are the physical quantities will help you to study the motion of the object? Yeah, yes, you are right. Uh, to study the motion of the object, we require displacement, velocity, acceleration. When object having constant acceleration, what are the equations we have? Already we, we have studied this equation of motion in class 8. So let's see the equation. So children, can you remember that equation? Yeah, you are right. You have the equations as, a, look at here, the equations. The equations for what? Uh, uniform acceleration. Already you learned these equations. I will show this equation. And before that, once recall that equation as your own. So when you recall the equation as your own, the equation is going to be like, uh, one is V is equal to U plus C A T and S is equal to U T plus half A D square and V square minus U square is equal to 2 A S. And in that, what is V, what is U, what is A? Here, exactly, V means, V means, uh, yeah, U means initial velocity, V means final velocity, S means displacement and A means acceleration due to gravity just acceleration, not due to gravity, just acceleration. Now the same equation how will apply a different situation. So can you tell me a, a, a simple situation where you can apply this equation of motion? Yes, you are right. You can apply this equation of motion across the freely falling body, across the vertical projected body. I will show how you will apply and how we have studied uh, the equations of motion for uh, vertically projected body. I will show that now. Already we learn. So the kinematic equation for vertically projected body. So let us see first of all the block diagram of the vertically projected body. So the vertical projected body is nothing but this is a vertical projected body. Here a man or a fellow is projecting object of a direction so that it is moving up a direction and coming down a direction. Understand? Very beautiful, right? So when it is this way, so how this equation of motion going to be changed? Already you know the equation of motion as a V is equal to U plus A T, S is equal to U T plus half A T square, V square minus U square equal to 2 G S. Let us see first equation how it is changes. The first equation is V is equal to U plus A T actually. It is going to be changed as gt. Understand? It is converted as gt. So here, what is the changes happen here? Instead of a, we have applied as g because the acceleration is happened because of the due to gravity so that it is converted as a acceleration due to gravity, just it is changed. And in this also, the displacement become as a height here because object is moving up, so it is covering some height since uh, the displacement is changed into height and here also acceleration is changed as g and in that v square minus u square equal to 2g h here height because of the covering the height uh, we are written here displacement as h and having under the influence of the gravity so we written here acceleration as acceleration due to gravity now in this case we have some uh, results those are nothing but time of flight, maximum height covered by the body and what is the velocity when it is reaching to the ground. The equations, let us see, you know, the equations are, first one is time of flight. Time of flight is nothing but 2u by g already we derived in earlier classes. So just I am showing the uh, formulas here to recall. So here this is called h max and here this is called uh, what is the velocity? Velocity when it is reaching to the ground. So these are the results we got earlier uh, for vertical projected body. 
and concentrate voice here, concentrate students here. This is a one dimensional motion. Why we are calling this a one dimensional motion? If you observe the, all the physical quantities like velocity, displacement, acceleration, all are acting in one direction like x direction. Since we are calling this is a one dimensional motion, then students you got a question here. What is the question here? The question is when all physical quantities are acting in one direction that is called one dimensional motion. If the all physical quantities acting in two directions then what is the name of the motion? The name of the motion is nothing but simply yes you are right that is two dimensional motion. So that is also we will see our main intention is now uh, concentrating on two dimensional motion because two dimensional motion is a very important uh, part for IIT mains and advanced. Let us start that two dimensional motion. The best example for two dimensional motion is what? Yes, you are right that is projected, projecting the object uh, with some angle. Let us see that now. Projecting the object with some angle so that is called oblique, mo oblique projection and also called two dimensional motion. Why we are calling here two dimensional motion? Here the object or physical quantities, every physical quantity acting in two dimensional, we can say that along x direction, along y direction. Let us see the block picture of the projecting body with some angle. See here, see here, this is a, a projecting the object uh, with some, a boy projecting the object with some angle. When the boy is projecting the object with some angle, the object is called uh, projectile and the path is called projectile path. So, look at here the important information related to uh, the trajectory or oblique projection. First one is project, projectile, what is mean by projectile and what is mean by the projectile path. If the projectile path is nothing but any object thrown into the space under the influence of the gravity. And the next point is the path of the projectile is called trajectory and the third part is the trajectory path is nothing but parabola. So, these are the very important points related to this trajectory motion or projectile path or oblique projection. Yes, now we are going to study how the equation of motion going to be changed for this projectile path. Let us start that uh, derivation part now. So, the very first one is these also called kinematic equation for projectile path. So, now this is a physical situation. Now, an object here, this is object is projecting this way. So, when the object is projecting this way, this, this is the initial velocity making some angle, making some angle theta here. When it is making some angle theta, it is having, it is going to be cover this direction. This is going to be cover some ux velocity this is going to be cover some uy velocity, ux and uy and this would be initial velocity and it is making with some angle theta. Now, as it is, uh, as it is moving, as it is moving, let me take object is after time, t, after time t object is somewhere over here, if the object is somewhere over here, it is covering some y distance, it is covering some x distance. In this case, how these equations of motion going to be changed? Already you know the equations of motion are, first equation is v is equal to u plus a t, second equation is s is equal to u t plus half a t square, third equation is v square minus u square equal to 2 a s. These are the three equations. These three equations how going to be changed for this situation? And already you know the object is having two direction. The physical point is having changes in two direction. Let us the direction. First direction is along x direction. Second one is along y direction. So, I will show, I will write in a tabular form. In the tabular form, let me write one is x direction, another one is y direction. 
y direction. Here, in x direction initially, how much is the velocity? You know, in x direction initially, in x direction initially, you can take as ux, that ux is equal to, when you resolve this velocity into two components, ux become u cos theta, simply. And similar way, in y direction, the same velocity in y direction is you become u sin theta. So, when you are resolving this initial velocity as components along x direction as ux is u cos theta, along y direction that is uy as u sin theta. Now, same way acceleration. If I take the acceleration along x direction, the acceleration is 0. Why acceleration is 0? Because in x direction we do not have any uh, force since acceleration becomes 0. So, along x direction acceleration is 0. Similar way, along y direction acceleration would be g. Why it is g? Because gravitational force is acting downward direction so that the acceleration due to gravity will act along y direction. Similar way, after time t, what is the velocity of the object along x direction? Along x direction after time t, let me take as a vx, vx is equal to, vx is equal to how much it is? u cos theta only. Why u cos theta? Because we do not have any acceleration along the x direction since uh, there is a no change in velocity along x direction. Similar way, along y direction, let me take as vy, vy become as, if I use this equation, I can write u sin theta minus g into t. This is why, this is how the equation of, uh, mo equation of motion changes for y direction. Here, in x direction, there is a no change in equation of motion because there is no acceleration in x direction. In y direction only, we have changes. Understand? And similar way, along a, now we studied initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration. Now, last and final physical quantity is nothing but displacement. Along x direction displacement, let me take as x, x is equal to, x is equal to, you know that? What is that? You can use uh, this equation. If I use this equation, the x displacement become u cos theta into t. This is for x direction. Similar way, along y direction, let me take the displacement as y, that y is equal to, again, if you use this equation for y direction, so u y, u y is nothing but u sin theta into t minus half g t square. This is y, this is how the equation of motion going to be changed for this situation. By using this, let us derive some important relation. The important relations are, first one is time of flight. What is the first one? Time of flight. Further, let us take a picture here. Further, let us take a picture here. The picture is same thing, same thing. We have thrown object with initial velocity u along this direction, it has ux velocity. Along this direction, it has uy velocity. But if you observe the thing, along x direction, the velocity remains same, not change because the acceleration is 0. But along y direction, as it is, look at here, as it is moving the upward direction, y direction component is decreasing. When it is reaching to the maximum position, somewhere over here, the y component is become 0. If I use the term, if I use the point here, initially in y direction, its velocity is u by, when it is topmost position, in y direction velocity is 0. I will use these two, two hints, v y is 0 here. If I use these two things here, by using the first equation of motion, v is equal to u plus a t. So, instead of taking this as a simple way, let me take this in y direction. When I take this y direction, this will become vy, this is uy, this is ay. Now, when it is reaching to the topmost position, 
what is the final velocity? 0 that is equal to initial velocity is what? u sin theta already just before we discussed minus acceleration become acceleration due to gravity that is g into t. Finally, this is the time actually nothing but time taken to reaching this position. The time taken to reaching that position is called time of ascent. Time of ascent uh, you can write as a ta from here ta you will get a u sin theta by g. By using this you know one thing how much time taken to reaching the maximum position the same time taken to reaching the ground. So, the time what is the time taken to reaching the ground is nothing but time of descent. What is the time taken to reaching the maximum height is called time of ascent. So, time of ascent, time of descent both are same. So, time of flight would be time of flight we can represent with a capital T that would be T A plus T D. But time of flight and time of descent both are same since you will get a time of flight as a time of flight as 2u sin theta by g. This is how you can derive the time of flight relation. Later after having this let us see one more thing that is nothing but maximum height. The maximum height is nothing but this is the thing. And here also you can use again the same hint. When initially in y direction the velocity component is u sin theta, when reaching to the position is velocity component is 0. So, by using this two things again you can apply third equation of motion that is v square minus u square equal to 2 years. But I am applying this equation along y direction. So, this is become v y, this is u y, this is a y, this is s y. So, along y direction v y at here is 0 minus along y direction velocity is u sin theta whole square is equal to 2 into g into h. So, this h you can take h max, h max here, h max is equal to what? u square sin square theta by 2g. So, this is the application of what? Equations of motion and these are the some results related to this topic. And next one more result we have that is nothing but range range is nothing but here to here. Let us derive that range also here. The range is the range. So, for that range look at here in the range the velocity y direction velocity is not changed. Actually what is mean by range? Range is nothing but the distance between a long x direction from the point of projection to where the object is sitting. That is nothing but this distance. This distance we are represented with range. Now, in this range uh, along x direction the object uh, velocity is not changing. Now, x direction displacement uh, is nothing but u x into t and acceleration becomes 0. So, that the displacement equation we are going to be uh, take it as u x into t. x direction displacement we are taking range but initial velocity in x direction is u cos theta we have seen in the tabular form and time taken to from here to here nothing but time of flight. The time of flight value is 2u sin theta by g just now we derive it. So, finally, you will get r is equal to u square sin 2 theta by g. So, this is how you can get the equation for range. So, I hope you have understood uh, this concept. We will come again with different topic until then bye bye.